your co-workers, that they may know who Lord, the Lord is and be fully pleased in his sight. Doing good works. As, body, as believers, we are to go out and to show others who Christ is. So we should do every work with that goal in mind. We should study our word to know who our Lord is and the characteristics of God. Knowing and knowledge so we may again go out and tell people who we serve. I like how verse 10 in the New Living Translation says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. Can I ask you a question? The way you've been living, has it been pleasing to the Lord? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Just think about it for me. I can give you a uh-oh for me. I was driving one day, driving along, and all of a sudden, a car just went right in front of me. He just decided he wanted to turn. If Luke can kill, <laughs> I was like, I know he did. <laughs> but I had to come back to myself and think on what Philippians 4 8 said. Was it, was it so it was true, was so it was lovely. Well, so it was just think on these things. I had to think, and I had to start thanking God that, hey, he may have caught God in front of me, but it was no accident. Amen. I was still able to move and go to where my destination was. Are your lives producing every kind of good fruit? Think of your favorite fruit. And when you bite into it, what does it do for you? It makes you, 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 maybe it's an apple, maybe it's a crisp apple. You like to hear the sound. You like that sweet and tartness when you bite into it. It's good to your, to your taste buds. It's good for your body. My brother said, I believe he said he likes grapes. When you're taking, you eating those grapes, and you, eat, you can't eat just one. You got to keep eating them because That's they're right. good. That's right. <laughs> watermelon. How many? I know all my southern people out there. Watermelon. Oh. During the summertime, your your grandmother, your your parents, or your aunt, they'll cut that slice of watermelon. You bite into it, and all that just sweet goodness just flows through you. That's good fruit. We should produce good fruit as Christ. Christ followers. We should be multiplying the kingdom for him. Amen. So as we go out day to day, when you're at home, school, work, wherever you are, producing every kind of fruit, that good fruit, that God will be pleased, and people can see who you belong to. In verse 11, it says, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all this glorious power so that you will have all the endurance and patience you need. <coughs> These have been some trying times in the last few years. I know a lot of us have, whole lives have changed. Places we used to go, we, we stopped going or we couldn't go as much. We've had family and friends and co-workers who have been affected for, with COVID or, or may even have it passed on. We, other ailments are still going on. We have people that are struggling with different types of diseases and ailments, job. We, we've dealt with so many things. But as believers, we should be reminded during this time that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And God is our strength and our strong tower. He lifts up our head. He keeps us moving. All of us stay connected to him. Stay connected to the vine. That we may grow in the midst of trials. 
James, in the book of James, it said, count it all joy. I know it's hard to count things all joy when you're going through, and it doesn't seem to be no end. But we got to count it all joy because we belong to the King of Kings. In our joy. Who is our joy? Jesus the Christ is our joy. In the midst of trials and sorrows, he is our joy. In the good times and the bad, he is our joy. And you can't keep that joy to yourself. Spread it around. Tell others about the goodness of Jesus. In verse 12, it says, always thanking the Father. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. You have an inheritance. The minute you gave your life to Christ, you have an inheritance. Everything belongs to our Father. He is our provider and our strength. You don't have to lack for nothing. You say, well, Sister Nim, my money's just a little low. I, I may can't eat steak like I used to. Maybe I'm eating just pork and beans, but you're eating. I might have to limit my driving because gas is so high. God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. There they dwell therein. He knows what you need when you need it. Just count on it. So I leave you with this. I ask that you meditate on these scriptures for yourself and place your family members in these scriptures. Recite it out loud on a regular basis that they may be strengthened with his glorious power and that they learn to endure and have patience. And that they rest in knowing that if they belong to the king, all their needs are already met. My brothers and sisters, we have what the world doesn't have. Amen. We have God the Father. And we have Jesus, our advocate, our big brother, the high priest. We have the Holy Spirit working within you. There's nothing you can't do because of who you belong to. So walk with the assurance of what he's done for you and what he's going through you. Amen? Amen. 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 I give honor to God who's the head of my life and I thank God for this house of worship. I give honor to Pastor Reverend Dr. Gavin and his wife, Leading Lady Patricia. I thank God that the Lord has placed them over the care of this ecclesia. And I thank God for my pastor, the full gospel Christ ministry, Pastor James Mitchell in Durham, North Carolina. I thank God that they're both pastors after God's own heart.
world, oh God. That they may preach, teach, and reach all those for Christ, oh God. That it will be preach and teach the unadulterated word of God. Lord, I lift up the apostles, God. That they are your spokesmen. And they will do and say what you ask them to do. I lift up the prophets, God. That they will bring a foretell and a foretell message. Based on what you told them, oh God. I lift up the evangelists, oh God. That they may go out and tell others about who Christ is, God. I lift up the pastors and the teachers, oh God. That they are pastor and shepherd their flock. And they will teach them the ways of the word, oh God. The unadulterated word of Christ. For the, those that are sick in body. Some people have been dealing with ailments year after year, some even decades, God. But you are the great physician, God. Touch. Touch the Lord God. And let them know that you will never leave them or forsake them, Lord. Touch those, God, they may not be physically sick, but their mind is Oh God, touch them, Father, to know that they can have sound mindedness, Lord, to be in sound mind, sound mind if they only trust in you, oh God. Lord, I pray for the caretakers of those that are sick, Lord, that are chronically ill, God. Strengthen them on every leading side, oh God, so they may be able to take care of their loved ones, God. With the love and assurance that only you can show and give, oh God. Father, I lift up all our officials, God, our local and our state and our federal officials, God. That they may understand and know that they have a responsibility to do what they say they would do. That they have a responsibility to take care of the people that are under their care, oh God. I lift them up to you on this afternoon, oh Father. Lord God, I lift up this house of worship, Father. Because it's been here for over a hundred years, oh God. I lift up Pastor Gelman, God. I thank you, God, that you have given him a vision for this ecclesia, oh God. Strengthen him on every lean side. Bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, God. That he may understand and know and continue to pray. 
<laughs> they don't know which way is up. <laughs> Some of them are so angry <laughs> that they don't know what to do but to be violent. But God, I ask you, Father, that when you send them to us, that we be ready and we have a right now word for them so they won't be lost. And they can understand that they have a life and you've given them that life and you've given them gifts and talents to live, Lord God. Help us, Father. To be able to relate that to our young people. Because they are our future, God. Father, I lift up the elderly. Father, forgive this nation. Have mercy, God. That we don't value our elders. That we want to throw them away when they give us their names, God. But Lord, I know that you care about the widows and the elderly, Lord God. You will make provisions away out of no way. So Father, increase our love. Increase our compassion. Increase our help. That we may help not only those that we know and love, but strangers. That we show the love of Christ to them, Father. Lord God, I lift up marriages on tonight, on this afternoon, Lord. I lift them up. You made the institution of marriage, not the world. I lift up every marriage in this church. Every marriage on this line, God, and every marriage that will see this after this, God, that they may join together as one, and you will be the center of it, Lord God. And you said in your word, you know, that he would leave his parents and cleave to his wife. Oh, God. May they walk in agreement. Your word says, how can they walk together if they have not been? Oh God, I'm placing in their heart so that they will put their hands to it and do your will for your glory, God. Oh, precious Father. You are great and mighty, and there's no one like Father, my prayer is that wherever we are, we show your light. Wherever we are, we be the salt of the earth. Wherever we are, we walk in the assurance that we belong to you. Father, increase our desire to do what you said in Matthew, God. Amen. To go out in the world, near and far, preach the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is my prayer. In the master's name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Your grace and your mercy. Thank you, God. What would we not do without your grace and your mercy? Thank you, Father. Taking the time out this afternoon in your business area to come and intercede and 
May you have a wonderful day and a glorious weekend. May the grace and peace of God be with you always. Would you?